It's all over. The sky has fallen. In the current car market, whether it's new cars or used cars, the prices just keep dropping. The used car industry is on the verge of collapse, especially for someone like me with a large inventory. I've lost a lot of money this year. Selling used cars is becoming more and more frightening. Each year is harder than the last. Look at this year. There's just over a month left until the new year. Normally, according to previous situations, today, which is a Saturday, there should be many customers. Take a look around you. Besides cars, it's just the salespeople. We are now in the store, and our staff outnumber the customers. Isn't this miserable? The entire store has two to three hundred cars, and there's a capital investment of 10 million yuan here. The interest is due at the end of the year. What can we do? There's the old saying, no choice but to bow to reality. So, we need to clear the inventory. If you do see something you like, please support us and buy it. Not only is the used car market fiercely competitive, but new cars are also not selling. A recently published video shows that Dongfeng Honda, China's largest Japanese car factory, has a huge unsold inventory and sales are far less than before. It is said that the prices for all models have been reduced by 10,000 to 50,000 yuan. Not only is the automobile market severely competitive, but other industries are also in a slump. In our small county town, even the vegetable stall owners are saying it's hard to sell vegetables. For us selling clothes, it's even tougher. There's no foot traffic, hardly any people. A few days ago, I had a customer who bought four or five pairs of pants in one go. He said he hadn't bought clothes in five years because he had no money. He had been wearing old clothes for four or five years, all worn out, not a single decent piece of clothing. Now it seems like most ordinary people don't have money, and customers who come to shop also say they don't dare to spend because they don't have money. Many boutique owners also say that business is bad, no revenue, and they are making a loss. I had an unsatisfactory Christmas Eve and Christmas. This Christmas was bleak, only wrapped a few bouquets. How dismal was this year's Christmas for business? Look at the catering. Have you seen the Jing A Brew Pub? Look inside. Only two tables of customers. Then look at this broken store, a popular new store last year, with only three tables of customers inside. Look at this whole street. How many people can you see? December 25th, Christmas Day. Worked all day in the store. A particularly dismal sale. Just over 200 yuan. You heard, right? Just that. Today, the mall's foot traffic is okay, but compared to previous years, it's much worse. Often, customers would just walk away upon hearing the actual price. I even voluntarily reduced the price twice. The Chinese economy continues to experience sustained stagnation and weak consumer spending. Faced with sluggish domestic demand, many companies have chosen to sell their excess inventory at low prices to overseas markets. Against this backdrop, China's export business has been severely affected by intense internal competition, with prices of 70% of major export commodities declining over the past year. Recently, preliminary trade data released by China's General Administration of Customs showed that in November 2023, China's exports measured in U.S. dollars increased by 0.5% year-on-year. This marks the first increase in seven months. Exports to major trade partner, the United States, have seen their first increase since July 2022. Specifically, the total value of exports showed a slight increase, but the growth was not significant. A key reason for this is the rising proportion of discounted goods and exports. According to a report by Nikkei Asia, of the 17 types of commodities whose unit prices can be calculated based on preliminary trade statistics, 71% have seen year-on-year -year price declines. This ratio has been rising since the autumn of 2022 and has remained high between 70 and 80 percent since May 2023. Due to China's surplus being shipped overseas, the overall price of steel products fell by 40 percent, thus lowering circulation prices in the Asian region. 
Statistics from the Thailand Iron and Steel Association show that from January to September 2023, China's total imports of steel products reached 3.49 million tons, a 23% increase compared to the same period in 2022. Milcon Steel, a major Thai steel manufacturer, stated that due to the influx of Chinese steel products, Thailand's local production capacity is likely to decline in the future. Furthermore, the increase in China's overseas market share for automobiles is also related to discount sales. In November 2023, China's car exports increased by 28% year-on-year, but the unit price dropped by 10%. A source from the logistics industry said that with the increase in demand for electric vehicles, domestically unsold gasoline cars make up a large part of exports being shipped to the Middle East and Africa at low prices. China accounts for 50% of the world's crude steel production and over 30% of global car production. Therefore, the low price export offensive could lead to a worsening of the global market situation. The report states that due to the slump in China's real estate market, price cuts have also spread to downstream industrial structures, such as a 10% reduction in home appliances. In the Consumer Price Index CPI, furniture and household appliances have been showing year-on-year -year negative growth since February. Prices of Chinese-made luggage and shoes have even dropped by 20% due to the urgency to reduce inventory. Data from ABN AMRO shows that the price of Chinese export goods fell by about 20% in 2023. Economists view this as maintaining or expanding market share through discount sales. Analysts point out that China's strategy of low price dumping could have adverse effects on the global economy, since most industrial products produced in China participate in global market competition, adopting a low price strategy could trigger a vicious price war. This could not only put pressure on global competitors, but also trap Chinese companies in self-destructive cycles, potentially damaging their brand value and profitability and ultimately affecting sustainable development. Previously, the Wall Street Journal reported that soft domestic demand in China led some factories to adopt export price cuts to digest excess capacity, raising concerns among competitors in other countries and potentially leading to new trade frictions. The report noted that the European Union's regulatory body conducted an anti-subsidy investigation in September 2023, showing increasing concerns in the region about China's low-priced electric vehicle exports. The United States' recent decision to impose tariffs on tin-coated metal products from China and two other countries also reflect this sentiment. In Asia, India is investigating whether China is dumping chemicals and furniture fittings at low prices. Vietnam is also investigating whether Chinese wind tower exports are harming domestic manufacturers. On September 13, 2023, Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Commission, stated in the European Parliament that a large number of low-priced electric vehicles from China have emerged on the global market. Von der Leyen noted that the prices of these electric vehicles were artificially lowered through substantial state subsidies, distorting market operations. In response, the European Commission has initiated an anti-subsidy investigation into electric vehicles from China. Von der Leyen emphasized that Europe supports competition, but not in a malicious manner. The European Commission stressed that this investigation was not in response to industry demands, but was based on the EU's anti-subsidy investigation. The investigation revealed that the Chinese government has adopted extensive subsidy policies covering nearly every aspect of the automotive industry value chain, including raw material supply, battery production, and software development. These government subsidies take forms such as financial support, reduced loan costs, and even direct state shareholding. Benefiting from state subsidy policies, Chinese car manufacturers can reduce new car prices by a fifth. The European Commission pointed out that this policy has pushed Chinese-made vehicles to account for 8% of the European electric car market, potentially rising to 15% by 2025. On August 17, 2023, the U.S. Department of Commerce announced that it would impose preliminary anti-dumping duties on tin-plated steel imported from China, Germany, and Canada. This decision was made in response to the findings that tin-plated steel producers from these countries were selling their products below fair market value, 
meaning their selling price in foreign markets was lower than in domestic markets. The department stated that preliminary anti-dumping duties of up to 122.5% would be levied on tin mill steel imported from China, including products from China's largest producer, Baoshan Iron and Steel Company Limited. On December 26, 2023, the Office of the United States Trade Representative announced an extension of the 301 tariff exemptions for 352 types of Chinese imported goods and 77 COVID-19 related categories until May 31, 2024. These exemptions were originally set to expire on December 31, 2023. According to the Wall Street Journal, the U.S. government recognizes that the prices at which Chinese companies sell their products in the U.S. are distorted by government subsidies unless these companies can prove otherwise. Starting in the first half of 2023, the U.S. had been reducing its imports from China. An analysis by the Wall Street Journal of Trade data released by the Census Bureau in August 2023 found that U.S. buyers are turning to Mexico, Europe, and other Asian regions outside of China for products, including computer chips, smartphones, and clothing. The U.S. shift away from importing Chinese goods began in 2018 during the Trump administration, which imposed tariffs on a range of Chinese products. The Trump administration conducted a Section 301 investigation under the Trade Act of 1974 into Chinese goods imported into the United States. The investigation concluded that China was stealing U.S. intellectual property and forcing American companies to transfer sensitive technology. The Trump administration imposed punitive tariffs on approximately 370 billion U.S. dollars worth of Chinese goods imported into the U.S. in 2018 and 2019. The products subject to these tariffs included industrial parts, auto parts, chemical products, bicycles, and vacuum cleaners. President Biden, upon taking office, largely maintained the tariffs imposed by the Trump administration on Chinese goods and implemented new restrictions on exports to China of high-end chips and chip-making equipment, citing national security concerns. Analysts believe that the low prices at which Chinese goods are sold overseas are a result of intense internal competition. After three years of strict zero-COVID policies, China's economy is increasingly sluggish, with severe economic internal competition, or involution, occurring across various industries. According to a report by the mainland media outlet Economic Observer, the five industries most affected by involution in China are medical devices, integrated circuits, agricultural chemicals, chemical products, and steel. The report cites several causes for this industry-wide involution, including the aftermath of the pandemic, challenges in international competition, a slowdown in innovation, and severe fluctuations in upstream industries due to weak downstream demand. These phenomena reflect the overall trend of persistent weak demand both domestically and internationally in China's market. Among the five fastest involution-affected industries, integrated circuits, for instance, experienced rapid growth in consumer electronics for remote work and online education during the three years of China's strict COVID-19 policies. However, these policies also led to supply chain disruptions, intensifying industry volatility. From the second half of 2021, a global chip shortage spurred a significant increase in semiconductor investment. However, as China's zero-COVID policies ended, the related demand decreased, compounded by a slowdown in technological advancements in consumer electronics and weakened global economic growth. This led to a significant decline in demand for consumer electronics. For example, in the case of smartphones, data from Canalyst indicates in the first half of 2023, global smartphone shipments fell by 12% year-on-year, with China's smartphone market experiencing an 8% decline. The Chinese steel industry has also faced various involution. Various media reports indicate that the operating environment for China's steel industry in 2023 is worse than in previous years due to insufficient downstream demand and high prices of raw and fuel materials the steel industry saw a significant decline in profitability in 2023 feeling the winter chill at both production and sales ends 
Reports state that due to reduced downstream consumer demand and steel companies operating at full capacity, market competition has intensified. This has led Chinese steel domestic enterprises into a paradox where increased production re results in less profit. The head of a leading steel production enterprise in Hebei province internally stated that in the coming years, 30%, 40%, or even 50% of steel companies could be eliminated due to market competition. In Tangshan Steel Market, the head of a steel sales company commented, This has been the worst year in my more than two decades of working in the industry. Industry business data for 2023 also shows a year-on-year -year decline in various indicators for the steel industry. Statistics from the China Iron and Steel Industry Association show that in the first three quarters of 2023, key steel companies had a business income of 4.66 trillion yuan, a 1.74% decrease year-on-year, -year, with a total profit of 62.1 billion yuan, a 34.11% decrease, and an average profit margin of only 1.33%. Wu Jianhua, a steel analyst at Shanghai Union Steel Business Group, stated that steel mills were mostly unprofitable for months in 2023. Only in the fourth quarter, when steel prices rose, did profits slightly recover, leading to an expectation that the steel industry's profitability for the year would be worse than in 2022. Wu Jianhua called for a reduction in involution, stating that overseas expansion by steel companies does not directly lead to a better competitive environment, but can relatively alleviate the domestic pressure of high supply. He suggested that steel companies should focus on high-quality, efficient, low-cost, and zero-risk digital transformation rather than relying solely on low-value-added products and homogenous competition.